And it's created space for Daniels as well. And here is Charlie Daniels. Daniels. Oh, would you believe it? And Charlie Daniels. That's fabulous. Here comes Daniels. This wasn't the plan, but they've worked it brilliantly. Charlie, I think it's interesting to say these are pretty interesting times. How are you and the family doing right now? Yeah, we're all good. I mean, as the whole country knows, it's it's pretty of a unique situation that's got got going on, and you know we're trying to fill it as as best as we can. You know, we've got a lot of fitness stuff going on in the garden, a lot of tennis, football, as much as we can keep the kids entertained as much as everybody else is. Has boredom kicked in yet for you? Uh, not yet. I've, I'm using it as spending a bit more time with the family, a bit more time with the kids, you know, try and teach them new stuff and trying to look at it in a positive way as much as I can. What have you managed to achieve with the little one so far? Uh, the little one, I mean, the eldest one, we're trying to teach him to ride his bike a bit more right. and, and play a bit of tennis. And and the youngest one, we're trying to get her to kick a football bat and start doing uh, letters and numbers, really. You've got to keep it varied, don't you, to get to keep the yeah, youngsters yeah. interested. You're on your way back from an injury, obviously, um, which you sustained back in late August. How's the recovery going for you? Yeah, no, it's going really well. Uh, I'm, I got up to the stage where I could start running on, on a treadmill. Obviously, that I had to stop uh, last week. So a lot of a lot of biking, a lot of indoor bikes. So uh, that's just the way we're getting around it now, just to get the cardiovascular up. That must be a bit weird, right? Because you're facing a race against time to mm -hmm. be fit for the end of the season. You're almost back, but you don't know when the season's going to resume. Yeah, I don't know if that's a good thing or a, not a good thing at the minute. But, uh, you know, when football begins again, we, no one really knows. I mean, I think there's another meeting scheduled at the start of April, so we'll have to wait wait to see what happens out of that. But for me, it's just all about getting as fit as I can and I make sure I'm ready for when it does start again. Yeah. That was awful luck on your behalf, wasn't it? That, that injury against Manchester City. The fact that... You sustained a knee injury something like five months earlier. I mean, how how kind of demoralising that for you? It was. I mean, it was only the second game back. I got. I mean, I got back quicker than than the physio sport and and the surgeon thought as well. So, in my mind, I was I was fit. I was healthy. And then you say for it to happen and the second game back was, yeah, a bit disastrous. But. You know, I've I've done both knees now, so I can't do any I can't do any more knees. Yeah, but that's the positive <laughs> side, I suppose. Trying to look at the positive. You've got um, players, of course, at Bournemouth who've suffered similar injuries. I mean, Callum Wilson's clearly done his ACL twice. So, did yeah. you lean on him maybe for a bit of support? I know Simon Francis has been there recently, as has uh, Lewis Cook. Yeah, no, definitely. Especially, say, Callum Wilson, who's been through it twice and done done it quite close to each other as, as well as I have. So to lean on him and, and to see his progression and how far he's come since doing the, the second knee and second ACL yeah, just shows how, how good the if the mind is strong, then the body will cope as well. Yeah, and you won't mind me saying you're, you're 33. So does that make yeah. it a little bit harder to come back second time round? Uh, I don't think so. I think hopefully a little bit more wiser, a bit more knowledgeable about what you've done and, and what you need to do to to get back to the, the fitness that you was before. So I, I'm looking at it that way rather than... The... <laughs> yeah, do you know, it's funny, actually. I was just wondering how um, taking on Manchester City has provided like kind of both bitter and sweet moments for you. Yeah. Um, now, obviously, you know, you suffer the injury back at the end of August. But then also, let's have a look. I think one of your sweetest memories came against them, albeit I know it was a defeat at the time, but you're not going to score better goals than this, are you? Well, I hope I am. But, uh, yeah, yeah but it was one of, the, uh, it was one of the, the sweetest strikes I think I've ever done in my, in my career. So uh, for it to say we conceded last, last minute and it was a bit of a, say, bittersweet moment, you know, because we didn't get any points out of it. We felt that we should have got at least a draw out of it, but you know, on a personal note, to score to score a goal like that against then champions, it was uh, it was a great moment. Yeah, you you said um, it's not possibly one of your best, but as you said, sweetest struck, it's got to be up there, surely. 
yeah, it's definitely up there. It's definitely, uh, you know, one of the probably the highlights of my career at the minute. It's uh, it's been it's been it was a great it was a great strike. You know, I was just unfortunate it didn't mean more than it, it did. Now look, injury seems to be a recurring theme for Bournemouth this season. Um, has that been the main problem, and is that why it's held you back this campaign? I think it has. I, I think if you ask the gaffer and ask the coaching staff, I think him not willing and able to be put out his his best eleven for a substantial part of the season has probably been one of the reasons why we we haven't done so well. But you know the people that do play have got a chance to to cement their spot. And if I was in that if I was in that opportunity and, and got that opportunity, sorry. Then I would try and try and make it. So I think we have been very unlucky with injuries, especially the timing of injuries. I think was the was the main one. I think if you think about David Brooks, just for example, he's been out for seven months. Uh, he's been a big miss for us this season, and uh, so little things like that really is, is I think has cost us in terms of not being able to put out our strongest eleven. Uh, so hopefully when it does restart again, then we'll have a, a lot more players back fit and healthy and hopefully we can uh, make a good run of it towards the end of the season. Yeah, and interesting you talk about David Brooks because mm. he's, like you said, has been a, been a big miss. I mean, last season, what was it? You scored something like 59 goals, or uh, 56 last season. At the minute, mm. goals have been quite at a premium, haven't they? 29 in 29 games. And that front three, I mean, they've been compared to the front three of Liverpool's last time. Yeah. I mean, that's how well we was playing last year when we had, uh, say, them, them three up front. And I think it's not only the goals that we're not scoring, I think it's the chances we're creating as well. I don't think we've created as many chances as last season. And Why is that? Probably down to a number, a number of different things. Uh, probably we've, we've changed formation a few times. Say we haven't had the same personnel as we did the previous season. So all little things you know, build up and as a whole it's probably ended up the way it has. Mm. Um, I think the one major positive, and because I don't want to dwell too much on the negatives, I've got to say Aaron Ramsdale, your yeah. young goalkeeper, he one year old. I think he'd never played in the Premier League up until this season and he's been one of your standout performers. Would you agree with that? Yeah, I agree with that. Yeah, Ramsdale's done unbelievable this, this season. You know, he say he's one of them people that got the opportunity and, and took his chance and he's reaping the rewards on it. Him and Mark Travers, I think, have pushed each other really well this season. And, you know, uh, Travers got a call up for Ireland, you know, played for Ireland. So both of them complement each other really well. And you say uh, Art of Boric as well, we've still got at the club. You know, I think he's teaching them a lot. And I think Rammers and, and Travers learned a lot from, from him. And, you know, he's showing in the way that they're performing. It's interesting because the back line at Bournemouth is so experienced in terms of in terms of years i mean you've got yourself obviously a left back you, yeah you've got francis cook um ake in there as well and then that's being marshaled at the back by a 21 year old i mean yeah. does he have the ability to marshal you and talk to you the way you want to be although the fact that he's only in his early 20s i don't think that comes into it. i think if you trust your goalkeeper then you're going to listen to what he says and uh, everyone at, at the football club, ever since he's been at the club, realises his, his potential and, and his attributes. And that's why he, he's been given a number one shirt. And that's why uh, everyone, everyone does trust him. Yeah. Uh, and you've been one of the few players who are still there, who've been <laughs> with, with right through the right of the divisions. I mean, you've been there, what, nine years? Uh, yeah, 2000, November, November 2011, I signed. Yeah. So how special is that then for you to have played such a key role in the rise of AFC Bournemouth? Yeah, I mean, it's, it's really special to go through, say, all the leagues and, and be part of such a historic thing in, in, in a football club. It's, it's really special and it's something that when I do finish and look back on, I'm going to look back on that my career has been something of, of significance, really. Yeah. And I'm hoping you're going to turn out once again in a Bournemouth shirt because I know yeah. you're out of a, out of contract in the summer. What's the situation there, then? Uh, so, yeah, we're out of contract. Obviously, this has halted all talks for a, a good number of weeks. But uh, hopefully, when we know a bit more, then we can start talking again if, if it does happen. If not, then I'm looking forward to getting back fit and, 
and say sign him for another club. Yeah. And what about any message for any Bournemouth fans watching this or any football fans generally? Yes, you know, we were in troubled times at the minute. Everyone needs to stay safe, stay at home. And, uh, you know, we will get through this and football will be back at, at some point. We don't know when, but, uh, you know, there's more more important things than football at the minute. You know, everyone's families, everyone needs to stay safe, everyone needs to stay healthy. And once we get through this, then football will start again. Yeah, uh, great words that, Charlie. And, you know, it's great to see you back on the road to recovery. Uh, after that injury and um, like I said hopefully we'll see you back in that Bournemouth shirt soon cheers yeah I hope so